Hey guys, Taki Cat, and now we're back with the complete card list. I rushed the video up earlier just so it was up so people could view it, but now we have the full list, so I'll have a quick recap running through all of the ones I haven't covered and briefly mention the ones I covered before. So without further ado, here are the new cards we can expect in the League of Explorers. Now there'll be 45 cards unlocked over four wings. We'll have the first two wings, the first coming next Thursday, Hype. They'll then take a one-week break for Thanksgiving, and then we'll have the last two wings coming out after that. So, pretty standard adventure mode. Let's go through it. So, the Forgotten Torch. There's the artwork now. Deal three damage. Shuffle Roaring Torch into your deck that deals six damage. Here is the Roaring Torch. Basically, a really solid card. I could see people replacing Flame Cannon in their decks who run it, maybe even replacing Frostbolt. Four Fireballs, one deck. Sounds like a fun time. Uh, Dijin of the Zephyrs, whenever you cast a spell, another friendly minion, cast a copy of it on this one. Basically, this is amazing in Priest, because in Priest you can do Power Shield, and it's confirmed that you will draw two cards because you cast it twice. This is also very good for um, Velens, because if you give this Velens, it then becomes a 6-10 with spell power, which is great, because it can't be BGH'd, and having that high health naturally of a 4-6, it just makes sense in Priest. Basically, good priest card. Well done, Blizzard. Obsidian Destroyer at the end of your turn. Summon a 1 1 Scarab with Taunt. This is like Hogger. It will do it at the end of every turn. Unlike Hogger, this is a lot harder to kill. Yeah, it can get BGH'd, but the kind of Warrior deck which would run this has loads of BGH targets. So it's a new defensive ish option which deals a lot of damage. I like it. A new. Oof. A new Bissath Sentinel. Death Rush will give a friendly random minion. Or random friendly minion, plus three, plus three. This is the most powerful buffing death rattle in the game. Yes, it is a five mana four four, but you could think of it as a five mana seven seven, in which case that's extreme value. There's also a card I'll show you later on, which is a row card, which copies death rattles. So potentially in that kind of a deck, this is a really strong thing. Next, summoning stone, neutral again, five mana zero six. Whenever you cast a spell, summon a random minion of the same cost. Fun times to be had. Again, if you spam like zero mana cost spells through um, Tharazan and other cost reduction stuff, you get loads of zero mana cost. This is going to be one of those cards which will either just be fun to play with, or if a deck does come out of it, this will be really powerful. So yeah, pretty exciting, pretty interesting, and again, big fan. One thing you'll notice as we go through, nearly all of these cards are actually playable, so Hearthstone team, well done. Dark Peddler, 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Battle Cry, Discover. Discover, the way that works is that three cards pop up on your screen. You pick one. Think of it like tracking. Uh, discover a one-cost card. Now, the way Discover works is it will only discover class cards you can use and neutral. So, for example, a Warlock could not get a Mana Worm. It could not get Mage Stuff. It can only get Warlocks or Neutrals. So, again, basically, this is a very good card in Zoo and just a pretty good card in general because it's value and it evens out your curve. Good job, Liz. Four mana, two, six. After you play a battle cry minion, deal two damage to random enemy. This is a chamois only card, and frankly, this is one of the mm -mm of the set. Not a big fan. Ancient Shade, four mana, seven, seven. Battle cry shuffle an ancient curse into your deck that deals seven damage to you when drawn. Basically, this is really good in aggro. Aggro doesn't care about doing seven face damage. We'll probably see play. Ugh, scary times. Reno Jackson, this will either be the best or worst card of the set. Uh, Legendary, 6 mana, 4, 6. Neutral, Battlecry, if your deck contains no more than one of any card, fully heal your hero. Basically, what they're trying to do with this is make people run a unique 30 list. So you have absolutely no duplicates. So on turn 6, you can always full heal to counter the aggro decks. Maybe you could run this in like a Warlock deck, which draws a lot of its cards. So if you have one or two duplicates, it doesn't matter. But yeah, interesting card. I'm sure lists will appear, and frankly, I'll probably play it in some of my own decks. Mm -hmm. uh, Tunnel Trog, 1 mana, 1, 3. Again, Shammy card. Whenever you overload, gain plus 1 attack per locked mana crystal. Now, the fact that it's a 1 mana, 1, 3 means it will probably get played anyway, because Shammies generally run Zombie Chow, so by itself, it's a good card, ignoring the effect. With the effect, now you'll gain plus 1 attack for each overload crystal. So if you're overloaded for 5 crystals, you would gain 5 attack. This is potentially really powerful. You play this on turn 1. You play Totem Golem on turn 2. You have the 3-4 Totem Golem and a 2-3. Pretty powerful stuff. Very good potential. Mage card here. 5 mana 6-3. Battlecry, discover a spell. Again, you get to pick 3 spells. These will be mage-only spells. 
you have to do the math on it, but from briefly doing it in my head, that's actually an okay-ish card. The stats suck, but in a tempo kind of deck, if you've got board control, that will still hit for face, and you'll get a card out of it. Pretty good stuff. Druid only beast, this is basically Pilot Shredder 2.0. 3 mana, 3-2, three, Mounted Raptor, Death Rattle, Summon a random 1 cost minion. Very good with something like Cavalda Raider, you have the potential of getting a really powerful minion. You may not, you may get a zombie char and heal the enemy, but it's a beast, it's Druid card, it's a 3-2, good stuff, it's probably going to get played. 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, Neutral Beast, Discover a Beast again, this is good in Druid because you'll get Druid only beast. you won't get stuff like Web Spinner and the Druid Beasts are generally all really good. It's slightly understated, but it's a value card. I don't see this ever being played in Hunter because Midrange Hunter is the only deck which would run it, and Midrange Hunter is already good enough, and the deck list is too tight. This is too slow, but in a Beast Druid, I can see it being run. 3 mana, 3, 4, Unearth Raptor, Rogue card, Battle Cry, choose a friendly minion, give a copy of it, ugh, gain a copy of its Death Rattle effect. Again, paired with this, that is some crazy buffing to be had. Really good synergy. It's worth playing just for the 3 mana, 3, 4. They're trying to push a minion-based rogue. Ben Broad said this himself on the panel. Good times ahead. Who knows? A lot of this is sort of like early to mid-game-ish cards. Hopefully it dulls down the aggro a little bit and we will have a fun time. 3 mana, 3, 4, warrior only beast taunt. 3 mana, 3, 4, taunt. Worth playing. It's a beast in a warrior. That doesn't really matter, but you never know. You might get some interesting stuff with like beast wrangler in hunter decks. And yeah, strong card. They're trying to make taunt a thing it seems maybe we'll get a bolster deck one day i doubt it still nice card one mana one one warlock only card battle cry if you have six other minions gain plus four plus four so this is potentially a one mana five five potentially it requires a lot but in all honesty this will probably see some play as a one of maybe in a zoo deck because still having a one drop is a one drop it's good enough right four mana three four keeper of alderman this is a lot better than you'll originally think Battle Cry set a minion's attack and health to 3. You go, well, it's not that great. It's amazing. Say they drop a 4 drop, say a Yeti, for example. You then drop this. The Yeti becomes a 3-3. Three, three. You trade, and you still have a 3-1 left alive. You can also use this to buff your own minion, so you can change a Silverhand Recruit into a 3-3. Three, three. So even just playing it flat on 4, uh, playing it flat on 4, if they have 1 minion, it's good. You trade uh, twice with it. If you have a Silverhand Knight on your board and you play this on 4, it's just a good card. I see this being played in nearly all Paladin decks where they have the space for it. 5 mana. This is a very interesting Priest card. I'm a big fan. Uh, deal 3 damage to all minions. Shuffle this card into your opponent's deck. Now I could see this being run in like a Light Bomb style Priest, which is just like full control, mostly spells. So they don't really care about the board. You f fill up the enemy's deck. It makes them actually not get to their own decks uh, quicker. So this is actually like potentially an anti-combo card because it you know, puts blockers in the way of the stuff they want. Against Zoo, this is amazing because Zoo isn't going to play this. So yeah, actually a really good card. Basically a slightly more powerful Holy Nova without the healing component and a drawback. I see it being played. Bran Bronzebeard, we've been confirmed right? that this is the best card in the game. So, 3 mana, 2, 4, pretty decent stats. Your battle cries trigger twice. This is for the entirety of the game. Wow, I see this being run in basically anything which ever considers running a heal bot. This is insanely good. Yes, you can play this, pander it, play it again, and you get like 4 battle cries. Ben Brode said that himself. This is going to be some really funny trolled in highlights. Uh, 2 mana, 3, 2, beast, huge toad. Death Rattle, deal 1 damage for random enemy. Basically, it's a good 2 drop. It's common. I see this being played a lot in Arena. This will be amazing. 4 mana, 3, 4, mech. Battle Cry, if you control another mech, discover a mech. Basically, read this as 4 mana, 3, 4. If you have a mech, draw a mech of your choosing. This is insane for mech decks. Mech decks run out of steam. They now have draw. They get to pick which mech it gets. Yeah, mech mage is going to be a thing again. Mm. Dark Trap. Not too happy with this one, to be honest. I think it's a bit of a dud. But anyway, secret. When an opposing hero power is used, deal 5 damage to a random enemy. It might be good. Your opponent has control over where it triggers. Sometimes it'll be dud. Sometimes it'll win you the game. 
I play mid-range Hunter a little bit at the moment. I usually don't play Hunter. I don't have room for this in my deck. I don't know who would. Yeah. Again, who's playing Inspire decks anyway? So, Right, Murloc Tinyfin. This is actually a lot better than it originally seemed. You go, oh, it's just a Wisp. No, it's a 0-1-1 Murloc. A Wisp. No. In Hobgoblin decks, you can now run Hobgoblin turn 3, double Wisp, double Murloc. GG, Brain Explodes. You instantly win the game. You can also use this early game in the perfect draw scenarios as a Murloc Warlock, where you basically drop your little buff creatures on one. You then drop, like, two of these, and now you've suddenly got three Murlocs on the board, then you drop the Tide Callers, you drop this, you drop that, it all gets buffed up with War Leaders. Amazing! This does how the nerf Neptulon slightly, and this does nerf Murloc Knights slightly, so sorry, Murloc Paladin decks. Sad times. Everything is awesome. You will start singing this anyway, uh, song. So give your minions plus two plus two, cost one less for each Murloc you control. You need three Murlocs this to be good. You need four Murlocs this to be amazing. Anything past that, this is insane. Murloc Shammy, will it be a thing? Probably not. If it is, this is probably an auto include. Two of might be too much. It might, you know, fill up the deck where if you have two of these in your opening hand, you're a sad, sad man. So maybe one off in a Murloc deck if Murloc Shammy becomes a thing. This is a bit of a joke, but apparently it's good, according to Ben Bird. At <laughs> anything can happen. Again, I want to start singing then. 10 mana Paladin card. Summon 7 Murlocs that died this game. This includes your enemies' Murlocs. So, yeah, it might be good. It might not be good. You have to kind of test it to see. It gives Murloc decks a chance to recover, which is good, because usually they run out of steam. But you have to survive to turn 10. If you got this in on your opening hand, you'd be sad. Mm, you never know. Could be very good potential. Very aggressive row card here. One mana, two, one beast. Again, you'll have some shenanigans with hunters getting this. Uh, destroy any minion damaged by this minion. Basically, you just play this so it trades up. It's probably pretty decent. You might see this in a few cancer uh, row lists. I really struggled with that sentence for some reason. In Tomb, the ultimate control card. Six mana priest only card, choose an enemy minion, shuffle it into your deck. Nice Ragnaros bra. I like how this is a common card, this is going to be really fun in Arena, and this is going to be really fun for new players who can craft this card early and get to play with the enemy's legendaries. You are going to rage hard when someone steals your Yosara. Pretty cool card, might become a thing in a control meta, probably not. Five mana, five, five, your cards cost five, period, your cards cost five. Interesting. I don't know if you'll be able to make decks out of it. You might be able to do some crazy combos. You play this on five, then you can play everything the next turn. You could maybe run it in some sort of like ramp list. You, or you play it on ten, you play this, then you play like a ten drop. Yeah, I don't know. Might be a thing, might not be a thing. Still, it's a cool card, and that's fun at least. This is probably my favorite card of the set. Druid 4-4 four, four, Beast. We want them beasts, mate. Both players have plus one spell damage. They just have plus one spell damage. Really cool. Very risky. If you play this and you don't queue into something which can benefit from the spell damage, this is an amazing card. If you queue into like a tempo mage, ouch, that's going to really hurt you. But it's just one of those things you need to choose when to play it, how many you should run, if you should run, run uh, if you should run one, if you should run two, if you should even play it at all, if you go against the mage. I think this will be potentially a very interesting card, and I'm going to try and make a deck out of it. Sir Finley Murgleton, 1 mana 1, 3, battle cry, discover a new basic hero power, so you get a choice of 3, you can't get like mage power, mage power, mage power, so you'll get a choice of choosing, some people might run this just in a Murloc uh, list because it's a 1 mana 1, 3, the interesting thing about this is that in something like Rogue, where the hero power tends to like stop being good at a certain point, you can use this to change your hero power to something more beneficial, it's going to be, in some cases, amazing. In some cases, kind of meh. It's interesting. We don't know. I could see it having some synergy. And, dude, one attack. Hobgoblin deck. Yes, please. Four mana, three, five. Troll, troll, troll. Battle Cry, shuffle the map of the golden monkey into your deck. What that is, is it's a spell. It's a two mana spell. You play it, it then puts the golden monkey into your deck, and you draw a card. The golden monkey is then a four mana, six, six taunt. When you play it, all of your cards, both in your hand and your deck, turn into legendaries. Yeah, legendaries. Any legendary, any class, legendaries. Pretty troll. Will be funny for some people. Very, very, very likely not to be a viable pick in ranks. But, yeah, it's a fun card. 
This is a bit disappointing. 8 mana, 8, 8. Battle cry if you control a beast. Gain taunt. Arena, maybe. Meh. 6 mana, 2, 6. Death rattle summon, 3. 2, 2 runs. This is a 6 mana, 8, 12. Potentially good synergy, but you play this on 6 and you go against the priest and they play Cabal. You then, you know, rage quit and uninstall Hearthstone. So, may see some play. This would be amazing in Patron if Patron wasn't dead, but it is dead. So, mm, we don't know. Might be decent. The most versatile sp card in the game. One mana Druid, choose one. So, it's already a choice. Choose one, discover a minion. So, again, a choice of three, either Druid or neutral minions. Or discover a spell. Again, choose one of three Druid spells. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. We'll probably get run. Is kind of like an interesting chance, like stack multiple stuff like swipes. The druid spells are a bit hit or miss, so you'd most likely be using this for minions, maybe spells. I don't know. It's interesting. Very good synergy, something like Wild Pyromancer, very good synergy, something like Auctioneer. May become a thing. You'd have to do the numbers on it to work out if it's good or not. Right, this one's interesting. So this is a warrior weapon. One mana, two, three. So you're like, wow, that's OP. Double all damage dealt to your hero. So. Mm. If you're using this to trade into the enemy's minions, you're now taking like 6 damage rather than 3 damage. And if they're attacking into you, you're taking double damage as well. Very risky stuff. You could play this on 1 and then replace it on 2 with your own axe. It might be a thing. I don't know. Maybe an aggro. Maybe an aggro, like they don't care, they just want to do face damage. This might be a good thing. I don't know. This is again one of my favourites. Curse of Rafim, Warlock, 2 mana. Give your opponent a Cursed card. This is it. While they hold it, they take 2 damage per turn. This is the card. 2 mana. While this is in your hand, take 2 damage at the start of your turn. Basically, it doesn't do anything if you play it, but you'll have the 2 damage if you hold it. So this is just an interesting thing you can play when you have you know spare mana to float. And now your opponent needs to work out, do I waste 2 mana this turn, or do I want to take the face damage? It's interesting. Because it's a delayed thing, they could instantly play it. You know, it's interesting. I can see some potential for this card. Again, this is one you have to do the numbers on. Not too keen on it, though. Two mana, one, two. Priest, battle cry, discover a death rattle card. So, again, a choice of three. Priests have very, very strong death rattles. But, and a big but, there are a lot of neutral death rattle cards. So, it may not always be worth it. If it was a two mana, two, two, I'd say this is amazing, but that'd probably be kind of overpowered. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You'd have to do the numbers on it. I want to say now, this won't be a thing. Four mana, seven, seven. This is amazing. Can't attack unless it's the only minion on the battlefield. Why is that amazing? Well, if you silence it, obviously that's great. If it is the only thing on the battlefield, it's great. But, Hamlock will run this just as a taunt. It's a 7-7 seven, seven giant, which you can always play on 4. Pretty good, right? Um, yeah, I see this being run. Even if it's just to give it taunt. This would also make sense in like a Watcher Druid silence list. It's just, I think, actually a pretty good card. And will get a lot of play. 4-mana, uh, 5 four Rogue. Again, they're going for this heavy minion theme. Uh, Death Rock will add a coin to your hand. Coin is amazing in Rogue. You can use it for combo. You can use it for Auctioneer. This will probably get play. Or at least people will try and give it play. 3 mana, 2, 3, Hunter, Beast. Battlecry, put a 1 cost minion from each deck into the battlefield. Again, this is good, like Cavildo Raider. This is 1 cost creature from both decks into both sides. So, for example, let's say that I am the Hunter and I have Web Spinners and I'm against a Warrior and he has Zombie Chow. I play this, I get a Web Spinner, he gets a Zombie Chow. So, a bit of a trade up. This might be really good, this might be really bad. You'd have to make a calculated risk. I do see this having some play, if even just for the testing. Very interesting mage card here. 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Again, mage only. Your hero can only take 1 damage at a time. So if you pyroblast the mage's face for whatever reason, they'll only take 1 damage. Yeah, okay, if you like spam arcane missiles, they'll take the damage. But this is kind of like an interesting taunt. It's like an anti-combo card. Yeah, I could see this actually being run in some cases if combo becomes a really big thing, and combo is pretty much always a thing. So, hmm, interesting. 9 mana, 7, 8. Why did you make this 9 mana? Why is this 10 mana? Sorry, Blizz, it's a cool card, probably won't get play. So, Battle Cry, discover a powerful artifact. These are the three artifacts. You've got to play it for 9. 
10 mana, fill your board with 3-3 three, three mummy zombies. Now, at first I thought the mummy zombies would have, like, a text. Apparently they don't, so it's just summon 7-3-3s three, threes or 6-3-3s three, threes if this is still alive. 19 mana. I don't honestly think that this would ever get played, because if you're in a place where you can play both of these and not die, you're going to win anyway. Uh, 10 mana, time piece of horror, deal 10 damage, random spit among all enemies. Feels a bit weak, really. I feel like it should be more. Mm, feels 20 damage. Ooh. Maybe that'd be OP. 15. But 10 for 10 doesn't seem that great. 10 for 10 to random? Nah. Uh, Lantern of Power. Give a minion plus 10 plus 10. Again, it's great if your Arch Thief survives, but he's 7 attacks, so he's probably not going to survive. If it was a 9 mana 6 10 or a 9 mana 6 8, and then you could buff it to 16, maybe in its current state, I doubt it will get much play. But anyway, these are now all of the cards. This is all up there. Sorry for the long video, but it had to be done. Hope this, you found this interesting. You can go on Hearthpone to see more of this. Check out my other video for more direct coverage of the adventure itself. I'm Tarkicat. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.